Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to probably the last of the series, at least for the time being, because uh, I've kind of been working on it on and off for quite a while now and actually feel like I want to do something else But um, in terms of computers, but yeah, anyway, we're on the temporarily tentatively called the final part, I guess is what you want to call it of the NT4 um, like master series and stuff like that um, which is basically um, moving on to the what I'd call the most interesting um, project that I've got lined up um, which is the uh, remote boot stuff so yeah it's basically booting off a floppy disk or you can use a NetBIOS ROM or something like that or sorry a boot ROM on your network card um, which I'm not going to show the latter because I don't have a card that has that or have it I don't have it set up either um, but yeah it's really just the last um, sort of fun part of the project really uh, first of all sorry if that's taken this long to get this video out I have been working on it uh, working on it uh, on and off for the past oh, like three well since the last video actually uh, pretty much every second day uh, this process is really hard to nail down um, and figure out you know what's going wrong and you know all the troubleshooting that's involved so I'll go through all of that in my experiences the other thing is there's been a fair bit happening sort of in my uh, personal life and you know just around uh, my work and housing and things like that so I haven't really had a lot of time and energy to sort of get back into doing videos and things like that so uh, I've got a bunch of comments to reply to and uh, just sorry in advance for uh, not getting back to people uh, but yeah really just taking things as they come really so we're gonna crack into the video this is what we need to get set up so from the last sort of series we've gone through a bunch of things really so you don't have to fill all of, all of this out but we're going to go through this and some of the the pitfalls of setting this up as well as um what these images are retaining to um just stuff like that i do have the order of these images kind of a bit thrown around but look once i explain it uh, it might make a bit more sense uh, and of course we've got some uh, useful links and things down here all right so to get started uh, just a pre-warning this utility or this setup or this technology um, whatever you want to call it this Windows 95 remote boot stuff it is buggy very undocumented it was a very uh, sort of thrown together feature I don't think it was widely used um, yeah uh, and it's a pain in the butt to set up so uh, the, I'm gonna show you the most basic method there is more advanced methods that you can use but I think by the time you've gone through this once I'm betting that you might be just like I just want to do a simple method just to have a play around with it so with that being said, just a pre-warning, and you need to know all about your DOS networking, IRQs, um, what else, like IO addresses, things like that for your networking, um, that's also very important. So with all that being said, let's get into our domain controller. Here we go. So the very first thing I am going to do is go to our data directory all right i'm going to create one folder and i'm going to call it uh sbs inside of that folder i'm going to create another folder called net pc like so you don't have to call it exactly this but yeah anyway and i'm going back to the root partition of my d drive and i'm going to create another directory called pcs inside of that directory i'm going to create another one called pc1 you can pretty much call it anything but i'm keeping it short and simple for a very good reason because if you add any more complexity to this likely is this isn't going to work all right we need to share these two directories so to do that i'm going to right click on this i'm going to make it not hidden and we're going to add 
administrators and domain admins have full control and we need to do the same for our PCs directory. All right, to recap, we've got these two directories. One of this, one of these is going to host the Windows 95 um, Windows directory and setup files as such. The other, which is this one here, is going to be our unique uh, PC name. So basically, um, there's going to be configurations and things specific to this particular computer that we're about to set up. Um, you know, basically ready to go um, that the remote boot system is going to reference. I don't think this is necessary, but every other process I've basically done um, has required this. We're going to go to our networking. We're going to go to services. Sorry, we need to go to protocols. Then we need to add Microsoft DLC. DLC protocol, it's going to want our server optical media disk, so I'm going to mount that or we'll put the disk in as such. Uh, um, by the way, for some reason, it always likes to remember the last drive letter. Cool, so that's done. Um, what else do we need to do? We need to go to services and we need to add a Microsoft Remote Boot service. And I'm actually going to make a directory and I'm going to put that on our D drive. And once again, it needs the disk. And I don't know why it doesn't just find that directory by itself, but you need to point to E clients forward slash RPL, just like I did there. So these services, this is probably the more structured way of having remote boot. If you're being really fancy and you're hooking it into Novell, any other networking like that, but we're not doing any of that because I'm too lazy, this has gone on way too long, and we're going simple. Once again, it's going to want to reboot. We'll do that, and we need to unmount the disk, otherwise it's going to boot into the setup. So we've got some shared directories, we've got some networking protocols, and um, yeah, that's basically all that's required on the server side as such um, to get the setup. So what I'm going to do while this um, server is actually rebooting, is we're going to jump over to my desktop, you know, that we're going to use as our base or golden image machine. Essentially, this would be your standard workstation that every everyone's got, you know, same exact hardware, configuration, things like that. And we're going to, um, yeah, go through the um, setup process. So let's go over and do that. Alrighty, so I didn't know this, but OBS decided to shortchange me on my microphone and it's... Uh, volume was really quiet but then slowly increased so that was a bit weird also please excuse the popping sounds that are going to be coming up later when the audio does return so the very first thing you're going to need for this is a original uh, upgrade release or that's probably the easiest way to get this uh, software um, is by downloading the um, retail release of the upgraded version of windows 95 and it has to be the original version, so version A. It can't be uh, OSR2 or any of the OEM releases as this does not contain the network setup um, functionality. So here's my disk here of Windows 95. And basically there's some utilities on here we're going to use to um, get the environment set up and all the files copied to the server. Once the uh, CD-ROM is in the machine there, we're going to just browse the directories. And you can copy the utility to the C drive of the machine, but I'm just going to run it directly from the CD-ROM. So the very first file you need to go to is Admin, then Net Tools, then Net Setup. And inside the Net Setup folder is a bunch of utilities for getting a PC set up. 
uh, ready to go. So you've got your batch um, setup executable. That's to create automatic uh, Windows 95 installs so you don't have to fill out all the options. It's like an answer file. You've got the INF utility, which sets up optional networking components and slipstreams them into the Windows 95 setup. It doesn't do drivers like I thought it did. You know, like you can bundle VGA drivers or something. You've got the standard policy editor, but the tool that we are quite interested in is the netsetup.exe, which is this one here. And um, yeah, that's the utility that's going to grab the files from the Windows 95 CD-ROM. As I said, I'm using the upgrade version here, and that's going to transfer them uh, to the so uh, server, the file server. So this is what the utility looks like, but first we actually need to map a hard drive, or sorry, we need to map a network drive um, for the utility to use, and we need to actually map the SBS directory, the slash netpc, um, so the, basically the Windows 95 source files that the setup is going to use to not only install Windows 95 as such, but also run 95 from the network share. So for that, I'm just going to go backslash backslash um, nt-server1-sbs is what I've got it set as. And what I would also recommend doing is checking your directories every so often. So what I normally do is after typing them out like this is I'll copy and paste them into the run dialog box um, just to make sure they all work. And yes, as I said, I will repeat this, like you definitely want to use this retail release. And it was, as far as I'm aware, the only retail release um, for Windows 95 was the upgrade version on CD-ROM. That was the only time I got a CD-ROM release apart from the OEM stuff. So yeah, I'm going to use this uh, path as the server path. So this is our source material um, and it's going into that net PC directory. We're going to select the server as the um, where the files are going to be installed from or run from. And this path here is our CD-ROM for Windows 95. We're going to use don't create a automatic um, answer file because we're going to create an independent one that's related to the machine that we're building, which is going into the other directory. You can throw a legitimate... Um, upgrade key which I do have but I'm just going to use the old classic uh, triple ones and then seven ones uh, after the dash and therefore it's going to just start transferring the files over to our server okay now that the files are copied over you get a little message saying you know the files have been transferred successfully we need to add our machine um, but yeah this is what's inside of the net pc directory so as i said this is essentially our c windows directory also containing our setup executable for windows 95 which we will run from a dos shell later but we need to go add under the machine um, add a machine and i'm just going to call this pc1 so basically um, yeah just going to give it a really simple name and for the path it's very important to use a um, U UNC path I think they call it um, so this is the directory um, and again I'd copy and paste that into a run dialog box to make sure it works we need to go edit script on the right and I'm going to select mode custom so this is the custom setup mode There'll be more on that later, which I'll explain, but it makes it just a bit easier to remember that how you actually need to use that mode specifically for plug and play configuration and hardware um, identification. So without that, it won't let you select items manually to scan for. Very important. And then um, you want to use the server based setup and we're going to store it on the server so that's very important and our boot media is the floppy disk so those are the only two items needed then we're going to hit ok and that's it well mostly so if we were to go to our server like so go to our PCs directory PC1 there is our batch file for all our details and things on it um, but yeah now uh, we need to edit our a few files basically to tell the machine um, 
a few details, well, the server and the config files, a few details about our machine, the type of product we're using, um, just general stuff like that. So let's get started with that. All right, so moving on, uh, one of the things you're going to need is your computer's MAC address, and there's no IP config tool. However, there is a Win IP CFG tool that you can run if you've got the TCP-IP stack installed against your network adapter, you can use that. Um, I don't have that installed, so I can't run that. However, what you can do is just mount the CD Windows 95 disk and open up msd.exe sorry, .exe on the Windows old utilities directory. And uh, yeah, here's our network adapter here. Okay, so there's a few things that we need to do before we can boot. Um, what I'm going to do is go back to our server go to our D directory so I can get to all the files I'm going to go to the SPS directory the net PC and I'm gonna look for a INF file called machines.ini so file sorry <coughs> what I'm then going to do is format this just like so it's got these weird squares so I'm going to get rid of them and then, yeah, we've got everything lined up just like this. Top tip, this layout is wrong. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste a directory I have kept earlier, like so. So the first thing we want is our MAC address of the network adapter. We're also going to use X as our PC location. So that's going to end up being uh, PCs and this is going to be PC1 then what we can do is copy and paste that into our run dialog box to make sure we can find that yep so that's all there there's our batch file so that is correct we need to save that so when we boot this utility what it's going to do is reference this uh, MAC address and this path and you'll see that these are flipped around because they've put the uh, cart before the horse. Uh, we actually need this drive leader mapped first in order to then load this directory. So that's why the drive is there first and then it's going to go, hey, I need to go to this path here to get to my machine directory. If you don't do that, you'll get a 003 error or some other random thing. Uh, and then we're going to go back into our... PCs directory back on the data drive so we're going PC1 MS batch and then we're going to change a few things in here uh, first thing we want to do is make sure that our install type is set as 3 that's going to set it as an optional install we also want to display our workstation setup we want to make sure that hard disk boot is set to 0 and we're going to add this command here, which is save su boot one. I'm going to just pinch that from a previous installation, and we're going to make sure that that path is correct, which it is. Sweet. So that's all we need to do. RPL setup equals zero. That one, if you change that to a one, that's going to boot from your network adapter ROM. Um, so if you've got a chip on there you can use that instead of booting from a floppy disk uh, but yeah so those are our two configuration files that need to be added in order to a specify the PC directory where all the specific data to this computer is going to be stored as well as our Windows directory you can have up to uh, many different machines by just specifying um, different ones in your machine INI file Cool, so that's all done there. We're going to close that off. Now what I'm going to do is take my boot disk that I had previously had set up. I'm going to edit a few things. Uh, so we're going to go into that. Edit auto exec.bat file. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave our network um, stuff to start up but we're gonna map these directories 
So we're going to tell the uh, Z drive. Uh, yeah, so we want our um, Windows directory to be mounted to the Z drive and the X drive is our PC's directory. Once again, you can copy these paths. We just want to make sure that they all work like so. Cool. Looking good. Okay, so now that we've got our specified boot device, which is going to be the floppy disk that's just going to load the network stack, um, I'm going to remove the hard drive after shutting this machine down and um, yeah, let's boot the setup and go through the uh, setup process. Okay, so I have removed my compact flash card. There is no hard drive in this computer. I have left in my floppy disk that we made just before. So we're gonna let it get booted. All right, just doing a voiceover because I explained it really badly. Uh, just this process only works with ISA cards. It doesn't support PCI cards. Also, the setup process does not, I repeat, does not support plug and play. So, a lot of uh, adapters and hardware items, you're going to be stuck with legacy mode. Um, I will upload an image which is located also inside of the spreadsheet um, of my plug and play settings. I have left my network adapter set to plug and play mode. This is a hardware toggle via the 3Com software. Um, but I've told the IRQ value of 9 that the card is sitting on that it's in legacy ISA mode. Um, you'll have to play around with your own settings and hardware because I've had a sort of mixed result as such. But as you can see with the network stack uh, driver loads it is detected successfully. Um, but yeah I just found it a lot easier to get this combo working. Um, but yeah just um, keep that in mind no PCI cards. You have to stick with ISA cards and definitely check your plug and play settings in BIOS. So we're going to load this, we're going to type in our password to connect to our shares. So this is our X drive and our Z drive and we're going to specify our setup file and our MS batch file just like you would uh, with any other Windows install. Uh, so yeah, it's just loading, just ignore the double up, I accidentally left a command set for some reason set in there. Yeah, super annoying, but I just ignore it and just type the password in twice, so no big drama. So you can see here, so it's very important to keep an eye on this, so this is telling me that the network adapter is working and it can connect to our server, so those are very important things, this command completed successfully that you'll see down below. All right, here we go. So we have our machine, and in this directory is going to be our setup file. So we're going to go setup. I'm going to just skip the scan disk check for the hard drive because there is no hard drive, and we're going to tell it to go to PC one ms batch dot inf. So this is our setup file and our batch file for this machine. I'm going to load that up and we are booted off the install process um, basically off the server all right so we're going to go next if you do not see this page after you click next and you go straight to a directory uh, option it's because the setup file cannot find your batch file, your MS batch file. So you need to make sure that your path is correct and that you get the server base set up. Without this, this whole process won't work. So it's very important that after you hit that, that next button that you get this. And we're going to select start from a floppy disk because we're not doing the boot ROM or the hard drive. This here is a little bit one of, just one of those things. It's it's picky. So what I'm going to do is specify our PC directory which was mapped to our X drive so that's going to be X column forward slash PC1 that's our um, directory where this PC1 is stored 
So remember those two shared folders on your um, on your drive, on your D drive, on your server. And what it's going to do is copy over some files to your um, your server, basically from itself. It's extremely important to use the custom setup. If you select any of these other options, it's not going to give you granular control over what plug and play is being searched over. And every single time my plug and play session would freeze as it was scanning the computer because I assume it's been dropping the network adapter. No matter what I did with the network adapter, putting it in, disabling plug and play mode, enabling it, disabling all the IRQs and the BIOS from plug and play access, just nothing worked. The only thing I've found to work is this custom mode. So if in doubt, just select custom. We're going to put a name in and it's going to want to analyze the computer. So if you leave this option as yes, it's going to just crash. So we want to use no, we want to modify the hardware list. What I would recommend is turning everything off, just everything off. So we're going to go through like this. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's likely just not going to work. I don't have any of these network, uh, sorry, these display adapters. So I'm going to just use the default VGA one. I'm going to just add our floppy disk controller. I'm not even going to worry about a hard disk or CD-ROM for the time being. I am going to add a keyboard. My mouse is a PS2 mouse. My network adapter is a 3Com Ethylink 3. I'm not even going to worry about scanning serial ports and things like that. And you can add a sound blaster. So I'm going to go sound blaster compatible. And now it's going to actually go off scan your computer for plug and play stuff whatever and it's going to update our pc1 directory with configuration that's specific to this machine so we'll wait for that to go through all right if you've made it past this step you're about halfway through um the period whether or not this is going to work or not so if you've made it past the plug and play stage yeah it's uh not uh not too bad so we're gonna hit next i want to install some stuff don't need to worry about that yeah so it's just the usual amount of components with any luck your network adapter is going to be automatically selected and what i've found is what you put in here will reflect on the files and setup infrastructure that's copied to your boot floppy which then for will affect your connectivity to your server which often just not allow the system to boot so whatever you put in here be very careful the setup has detected this already i'm going to just leave it as default because i don't want to mess with it um yeah it's just picked it out so we're just gonna leave whatever's selected hit next I'm just tell it to use this you can actually join it to the domain as well so we might just do that and we're gonna set our region that's pretty much just a normal windows setup and what it's going to do is copy some network stack drivers from your boot floppy that we're using. And it's going to have that all prepped, ready to go on memory. And it's going to ask for a blank floppy. So we need a disk that you're willing to format and sacrifice. So we're going to remove my known good one, different color. I'm going to put that in. And we're just going to let it go through and copy the boot setup files um, to this disk and then once this is done we're still not done with the modifying this setup process utterly ruins the boot procedure for this it doesn't work out of the box so we have to put our hard drive back in and edit our auto exec bat and copy um, maybe some network stuff over but i think we can just get away with the auto exit bat so we're gonna let this finish go through and then um 
yeah we're going to edit those files and i wasn't kidding when i said this is fussy this is something that is utterly useless it's buggy it's slow and really annoying to set up so this is literally just more for historic purposes purposes on how to get this uh going uh, while we're waiting for that to um, finish writing the disk, I thought I'd just show you my um, BIOS settings that I'm using. So yeah, I've turned off plug and play mode and IRQ9, which my network card is sitting on, is set to legacy ISA mode. If you get stuck, there are some links here as well that you can go through, but I'd literally just cheat off the video and the screenshots because um, I'm trying to be I guess a bit useful and you can see here back in our PC directory if I move my um, thing over god I don't know why my web camera is so big that's weird it doesn't matter um, yeah there's all the uh, extra files and things like that um, that you can uh, see that were copied over cool okay so that's done what I'm going to do is restart I'm going to put my hard drive back in and uh, you want to remove your new uh, boot disk as I said if you don't change this uh, now it's not going to uh, work so yeah I'll show you guys uh, what we need to do to make it work okay so the disk is back in the floppy drive of the machine we're going to open up our auto exec bat file and uh, what we're going to do is literally just copy and paste this all over the front like this. And let's explain what's going on here. I can't remember what this is. It's not important. It's always there by default. So we're doing our network stack login. We're also mounting our um, directories. So we've got NT server one SBS. We've got our PC directory, which is our PCs and this is the um net pc path so what we can do oops copy that once again and go net pc make sure it's you know readable um we're going to change this we're going to put a temp directory in here and i'm actually going to go back to our D drive it's really hard to type around the microphone and I'm just gonna create a folder in here just call it temp so there's a temp directory I'm I'm putting that there on purpose in case it, in case it gets removed by mistake so this command here if you don't have it set up this way it's not going to know where to reference the system files for this PC therefore going to fail to boot and the this runs win.com which essentially starts the operating system so what I would do is just copy this line for line just change your paths as I said it's try and match these drive letters to what you put in at the very start and fingers crossed it actually works I'm going to shut down the computer, remove the hard drive again, and um, yeah, we're going to um, see if it works. All right, my compact flash card is removed. You'll see that here on the BIOS for proof. There we go, no hard drives except the CD ROM. You can add that later once Windows has got itself sorted, uh, but in the case of this set up less is definitely more all right so currently we're booting off the floppy disk it's going to ask us shortly to log in with our domain credentials so we will do that all right so here we go here it by default puts in your mac address but it actually needs a domain account so we're going to let it do that now keep an eye on this process once again you really want to make sure that it maps these drives if it doesn't then yeah you've got some pretty big issues so yeah we've got command completed successfully that's a good start we're going to check our pc directory how's that going to look yeah we're good there at this point if that set mdir command 
fails of a 001 or a 003, please check your machine's INI file. Uh, also make sure the MAC address is correct and that the layout, that the drive letter is there above at first and then the system path is specified below it. If you get a kernel 386 error, like I'll show you if I can find a good image of it, I think I took this photo before, um, that means your network card was dropped upon initialization of the operating system and that's where the legacy and plug and play mode on your network adapter comes in. As I said, this is super buggy, it's terrible. But you can say you've done it. I should be more positive and optimistic, but I think um, I've, it's taken so long to get this process down to figure out what little things are stopping it. And that's only specifically with this machine. You know, this this process might work for many others, but, you know, like, it's only one computer that I've tried this on, so I can't imagine deploying this, you know, really in a large quantity. God, would have been horrible but anyway it's all good fun and games so yeah technically we are loading the setup uh which is like the other half of what you would have when you're setting up windows 95 off the network adapter so that's pretty cool yeah see here's my uh boot device aha the floppy disk drives whirring away you gotta of course leave it in and hope there's no bad sectors so yeah i'll come back once it's uh gone a bit further Hmm, always good fun with blue screens, see if we can get past it. Uh, not good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restart, see if we can get past it. Okay, it looks like we may have been lucky, I will admit. I was not expecting that to work after the uh, reboot, so uh, as I said, it's just another one of these um indicators to show how undeveloped and fragile this feature is oh, jeez i tell you what goes if you want to attempt this like uh, it will test your patience to the max almost to the point where it's not fun because it's like there's no online resources like you you're on your own basically there's a few people that have done it but i don't think anyone's sort of walked through the pitfalls start to finish over a video i've seen a good guide written up which is linked in that spreadsheet um but yeah i tell you what i've also got the windows 95 resource kit which has a bit of information in it as well but yeah like i tell you it's brutal so anyway We'll uh, carry on and wait for this to uh, finish its boot up. It takes forever because it's booting off a floppy disk as well. So not only does it take forever to set up and diagnose, it takes forever to boot. So you gotta, you know, you gotta wait ages to see if your changes even worked. Okay, here's the final boot up procedure. Uh, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, well, it's pulled in our group policy at least gonna log in you can probably grant oh gosh you can probably grant users access as well uh, to that shared directory so they can use this but look at that we've got glorious 16 colors 640 by 480 resolution but this is the operating system uh, there's my hard drive we are fully using this OS from a network share so it is windows 95a um i forgot to mention that um i'll if mitch when you're editing this video remember to put that line in you better do it otherwise people are going to try and use osr2 or something which doesn't support this <laughs> um but yeah here we go We've got our device manager bunch of other stuff none of this is going to work oh we do have sound um but yeah none of this is going to work because of plug and play oh, gosh i just see this is just so limited in what it supports but i mean if you've got components that windows 95 natively supports um yeah you can add all sorts of stuff 
So interestingly enough, here's all our map drives here. Here's our PC, this is where everything's going to sit. Um, yeah, that's all there. SBS, that's our Windows files. So this is definitely like a full version of Windows. You know, that's just running off the network share. Can edit these, like so. Yeah, it's no C drive, but we've got our floppy disk drives. Uh, what else have we got? Not much. Yeah. You can add your CD-ROM drive by doing the add in, um, add hardware, sorry, and going through and it will detect it. I've done that before, but as I said, you probably want to be careful. Um, what else? It's pulled in a bunch of stuff from Windows NT by the looks of things. HG, HP Jet Admin. We don't have a printer set up, of course. Uh, it's like a print queue manager. Got the Microsoft Mail Post Office. I believe that's a Windows NT thing. Uh, did it bring over any games? No, it did not. Uh, yeah, we can add our uh, Microsoft Exchange mailbox. Like this. We're going to add our path. I'm just going to cheat. Why not? There's our path. We are going to administrator this one. Okay, so everything's unique to this PC one. And then that's set up. We can open up our inbox. Oh, mail galore. Nice. We could even try and log in as another user. Why don't we try that out and see what happens? It might not work very well because I haven't got domain users on the permissions on the uh, um, share. But you know what? Oh, I can't do a log off. I think once you're in and logged in, you have to restart. And that might be a permissions thing against the hard drive. That would have been interesting. Yeah, here's Solitaire, which I've forgotten to how to play. Yeah, not very good at Solitaire. I think I can go there. Um, yeah. Oh, jeez, master already. Uh, of course, we've got a paint. Um, we can send abuse to other staff, I guess. New email. Send that baby off. Yeah, take that, HR. Cool, um, well that's, like, to be honest, what you see is what you get, and it's very limited what you get, so enjoy. But look, that's the process start to finish on how to set up everything that's needed to remote boot a Windows 95 uh, install from a floppy disk. You can do it from a boot ROM on your network card, but you need the Novell network suite with it because Microsoft never developed a full stack to manage boot ROMs for NT4. This feature as well, uh, I'm not sure if I highlighted it, only works with, well it might work with Server 2000 in terms of the shares, but the native utility that's baked into NT4 was only available with NT4. And as far as I was aware, the RTM release and the OE, sorry, the retail release of the upgrade version of Windows 95 are the only two versions that support that um, network utility uh, to copy the files over and start a network install of Windows 95. So you can try and play around with it. Uh, once you get more familiar with the process as well, it might be a bit easier to break out of that shell. Um, you know, but I just stuck with version A upgrade release 
because it's got the files you need to run this plus it's got the Nets network utility in order to copy the, the files over so yeah that is pretty much it um, i hope you guys enjoyed it was a pain in the butt to put together i am not gonna lie um windows 95 does run kind of all right i mean it's not exactly you know as my old colleague used to say it runs a bit like a dog with no legs he was english i'm not very good at doing english accents but yeah uh, no it was really cool i wanted to wrap this one up anyway just to show the the method but yeah if you get stuck just go back through the chapters hopefully it has some nuggets of information in there especially the pitfalls around the machines on i file your batch file where to put things how to get the back end basically set up then what to do when it goes wrong basically at this you know while you're booting the os which in this case many many things can go wrong you can see just blue screen just basically getting started but yeah anyway that wraps it up hope you guys enjoyed good luck have fun and um i think i need to get back to you know something else uh because this yeah this was a hard one to make <laughs> all right catch you guys later and uh yeah see you guys soon